Good day and welcome back everybody. I'm the Clueless Traveler and in this episode we're finally going to... Yes, that's right, we're finally landing in Maui. After a comfortable six hour flight, of just seeing water and water and water we finally start seeing land and these little islands start popping up in the distance and the nice thing about it is that before you land they take us on a little tour around the islands because they have to approach the runway from the southeast direction and we come in from the northeast so making the turn we see a couple of the islands that are in the bay of maui very beautiful I'm now in Maui. Amazing. It's already very hot. And uh, now I have to wait for my baggage and then uh, message the, uh, the lady from the house sit and then she's gonna pick me up. It's like a 15 minute uh, drive to get there. And that's it. So six hour flight was, was decent. It's nothing too special, but it was uh, quiet mostly. Nothing interesting going on. So yeah, we finally landed. It's amazing. So now we're going to explore this place for two months. Well, we arrived here in Pukalani, which is the uh, village that I'm staying at. And uh, I've just been chilling in the room for a long time now. And I'm just going to have a quick walk to the grocery store. It's like 15 minutes from something. But that's okay, I've already been sitting for a long time anyway. And uh, it's very quiet here, very quiet. Well, good morning from Maui. I uh, just drop off, dropped off the Jean and uh, her two brothers. They're three in total. So she, uh, her sister, she's the sister, and then with her two brothers, they live in that house. So I just dropped them off at the airport. It's uh, roughly six six thirty or something, and. Uh, they told me to, she told me to go to this beach, to have a look at the beach. So I'm going to the beach for a quick uh, look. And then I'm just gonna go back and have to work a little bit first and then come back to town for have a look around, get some stuff that maybe I need. They really left me with a lot of things. Like fridge full with food, pantry full of food. Um, a lot, a lot of things that I can use. <laughs> I have two cars to my disposal, electric one and a normal one. And she also gave me a pretty big list of things to do. So I guess that makes kind of sense then. It evens things out. But here we are at Maui Beach. My first beach on Hawaii. Like. How often can you say that you are at the Hawaiian beach? That's something that most people, especially, you know, Europeans, because it's very far away for us, but even other Americans, maybe like East Coast Americans, or how often can you say that? Like it, for us, it is like this luxury thing to go to Hawaii. It is this expensive journey to, to make. And it's like this, this dream that probably never happens. And here I am, Hawaii. It's amazing. Look at that, eh? Beautiful. It's amazing. Wow. Incredible. Right, so let me explain how I actually managed to get here for free, basically. So I used this website called Trusted House Sitters. And you have free subscription options. The cheapest one is around 100 euros and it enables you to use the website for a year. The most expensive one is around 200 euros and yeah, you have various perks that you can get if you choose the other one. You have to, of course, go for a verification process. They have to know that you are a real person, so not, not like they accept everybody. 
and then you make your profile here you can see what my profile looks like i have a couple of reviews which is kind of hard of course if you only do this occasionally so it's very important in the beginning to have reviews and from here on it becomes easier to get new ones but if you don't have reviews yet you can also let somebody write a recommendation letter and you can post that on your profile so that people can at least read other people's opinion about you before you can actually accumulate reviews. The big question is of course how likely it will be that you can find something. Well here you can see the amount of options we have. Obviously it's mostly in uh, western countries or English speaking countries like the US, Canada, Australia, the UK, in Europe. But there are definitely a lot of wild cards out there in Asia and Africa. And let's have a quick look at Hawaii of course because it's relevant to us right now. At the moment there are free options but this fluctuates a lot and every day you can have new options and every week you can have new options. Especially around the holiday season, Christmas, New Year, this is very popular to do so I cannot recommend it enough. Take the opportunity, take the chance, you can probably see things that you would never see with the budget you normally have. So let's see what it actually looks like to house it. Well I'm here already for one week now because after I arrived I dropped off the, the owner of the house and her two brothers the next day at the airport and uh, since then I'm basically just back to work again. I got my working station over here. I made this little spot for working. Uh, good seat is important obviously. And um, she left me with some instructions of course to take care of the house and the pets. The only thing is that she left me <laughs> four pages double, double printed. So. That's four pages, uh, quite extensive, sure. So the following thing is that we have here the subterranean area and we have all the feeding stations here and everything and the food and whatever. So we have one fridge, two fridge, here we have um, eggs eggs that I'm supposed to boil and or scramble to give to the chicken. I think that's cannibalism, but okay. Uh, I have to give blueberries to the chicken and, and there is fresh fish to give to one of the cats, the one of the house cats, which is quite ex expensive, like real tunas, like just real fish that is normally very expensive given to a cat. Sure. Um, well, then we get all the food for the dog, and vitamins, uh, again, chicken food, different versions of chicken food has to be mixed up. And then we have the cat food. So this is for the house cats. And this is for the feral cats, because we also have feral cats. Um, I guess the difference is the price probably or something, this is cheaper probably than this. So I have to give that in certain degrees to them. And have to obviously pick up the mail, all those things. So let's go to the garage. What, where is the main feeding area and what is the, hang, the, 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 the hangout location for all the cats, generally speaking. So we have crates with food. This is for the cat. That one, the dog. That one, the bird. And all these drums over here are different kinds of food. Chicken and duck food. All kinds of food, 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 food. Very interesting. Um, and then all the bowls are there. I just cleaned them. So there are different bowls. I have to fill all of them at night. And leave this garage door open for very, very... Um, like like a little bit open just uh, to keep other animals out um, and then the idea is that she has these baking trays and she fills them with a bit of a little bit of water puts the bowls in that water so she keeps the ants out which is kind of smart and and then you put the food in for the cats anyway that's basically the things I have to do here so for the next two months I'm just gonna keep it up and when they come back, as long as everybody's alive, everything is good, right? 
Meet Penny. Penny has extreme separation anxiety and has not learned any rules from her owner. Of course, understandable, you can't really expect much from the elderly in this case. But I tried at least to give a little bit of discipline to this dog. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Come. No, you're nails. Penny. Penny, sit. Come on, sit. Penny, sit. Stay. Okay. No. In the garden. In the garden. <laughs> okay, let's close this door for one second. No, Penny. Come here. Come here. No. Stay. 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 No. Penny, get in. Come on. You're gonna eat the cat food again. Move. Here we have one of the house cats. In total, there were three house cats and then three street cats, of which most of them were kittens. The house cats had this feeding area, one upstairs, and then the street cats had their feeding area in the garage. The owner is a slightly overly concerned person and therefore orders a lot of food for the cats and the dogs and everybody. Even while she was away, she kept ordering from Amazon. The amount of canned food boxes that I had to put away was enough for months. But yeah, I guess she's just very concerned. Anyway, I had to give them various types of food. The house cats got the luxurious version, the street cats the cheap version, and then the kittens were supposed to get the kitten food. But it's quite hard to separate all of them because they just run around and they just eat whatever they find. So yeah, I did my best. Also considering that the house cats and the street cats didn't really get along and the dog would always try to chase them anyway. So it was kind of a uh, cat and mouse game but with dogs and cats. I also needed to clean the driveway every morning because a group of geese would come and visit and then they would poop everywhere and I had to clean it. Then I also had to collect the mail, thinking it would just be like one letter every couple of weeks. No, they got so much mail, I have never seen that much mail in my entire life. Maybe it's an American thing, I'm not sure, but I was kind of shocked. And then there was also this random hen I had to take care of. Feed it with eggs and blueberries. And make sure Penny would not chase the chicken away the whole time. And the final task was to keep the plants alive. So luckily they had a drip system. So didn't have to worry about the big plants, but a little vegetable garden going on, so I had to make sure that they didn't dry out and die. So all in all, I have enough tasks to keep myself busy with, but I'm not complaining, because I'm staying here for 6 weeks for free. I got 2 cars available, one of them is electric, I never have to go to the petrol station ever, and I can go to the beach in between my working hours. Sign me up again. This is... Amazing. Good day from Maui, Hawaii. Today I'm on my way to my first uh, real beach destination. I've been here for roughly a week, just uh, back to work basically. And this is the road down to uh, the main village and actually airport. And this is what I see every single day. Just have a look. Obviously the camera doesn't do justice to this view, but it's absolutely beautiful panoramas around here. And most of the places where you are, you can see most of the island basically. So obviously not, not the other side of the, uh, the, the mountain sort of, but everywhere you are, you see the other side of, of where you were before. Which is for example in the Netherlands, where I'm from, never possible because everything is flat as a pancake. So this is just absolutely astounding. Just you see the ridges everywhere. You see all the beautiful formations in the mountains. 
and the beautiful blue water from afar. Well, here we are at uh, one of the beaches. This entire area, which I will show you later, is the rich people's area with all the fancy, expensive hotels and everything. Uh, I'm not sure if those beaches are shared or public or something, but I will find that later. This one is at least uh, open to the public. And uh, yeah, let's enjoy, let's have a look. We are at the Makena State Park, which is on the south side of Maui. And this is kind of like a uh, mountain, little mountain top over here. And um, yeah, this is the parking where I am at the moment. The weather actually has turned uh, a bit rainy, but we will see what happens. So yeah, I'm just gonna have a look around in the beach and stuff. And there's a lot of information here about what happened. So apparently this is all from a volcanic eruption, from uh, underground eruption. That's why this particular part came out. And it has been used in various ways. So uh, if it has been used as farming community, for example. Uh, it has been used as a radio location during the Second World War. They even did landings here. Radio station, landings cattle farm and they have various beaches here so they have the the black beach which is over there and they have the smaller beach which is where I'm going soon and this is the very very big beach over here so a lot of room for everybody there's also some folklore about this region how this happened it's a uh, it's a bit hard to understand exactly but it's basically one of the gods created this by killing another god or something and that's the remnant what you're seeing today it's like i'm totally butchering the story but it, it, it's interesting that they have a lot of those mythical stories obviously it gives the uh, the whole area and everything a very nice culture as cultural aspect also uh good to mention is that you have to pay for the parking and every entry so you can try to park outside which saves you ten dollars um, and per person it is five dollars so i paid fifteen dollars now because i parked here um, yeah just want to avoid the break-in also it's not my car so rather be safe than sorry so that's also to mention you have to pay in many places or you have to park a bit further away it's uh, up to you So there we are at the beach, and it looks quite nice as you look that way. But then behind me, it's completely filled. The whole uh, there's clouds everywhere. So you can climb up here to get on top of this uh, sort of rock formation and go to the other side of the beach.
Wow, look at me. That's uh, that looks quite steep on my bare feet. <laughs> We are at Black Rock Beach, I guess. It, this is all lava. This is all solidified lava. Of course, it's very old because there's there's not been an eruption here for a very long time. But look at this. And you can see the other islands from here. So. There is one island, I forgot the name, but it's, I think, not really inhabited. Uh, there is like a little sort of, yeah, crater. I think it's called a crater. That one over there. It's a popular diving destination for the corals and everything. And then that island over there, that one is, I think, a little bit inhabited. Uh, yeah, and then you can see the other island next to Maui, I think it was M Moconi or something, I, I forgot the name. Yeah, pretty nice, pretty cool. Right now I'm exploring a little bit of this so-called lava field, which is obviously completely rocked up, I guess you could say, or just dried up. <laughs> Solidified, that's what was the word I was looking for. Uh, yeah, looks like this, it's just completely black. And it goes all the way over there probably. So a uh, detail is that that beach next to, next to this is a nudity beach, which I didn't know until I walked on it. Uh, I mean, I don't don't care, but it's just like a surprise for like, oh, this is the kind of beach. Okay, no, sure, fair enough. Uh, so if you have kids, to be fair, when I was a kid, we also went to nudity beaches, and I think it's uh, just normal, normalized nudity. I think that's the most important thing. Don't sexualize it, but make it just normal. You know, we are all humans. Anyway. There's a lot of coral here. Everything is coral. Just broken, smashed apart coral, smashed on the rocks here. Everything here is just broken coral. It's, uh, I hope at least it grows back. That's the most important thing. It almost looks like a little bit like a uh, pavement or something with all the sort of squares. It's uh, yeah, like all those all those sort of blocks everywhere. It's kind of interesting. It's just a strange idea to walk on lava, you know, like on, on used to be lava, you know. It's really uh, interesting. Very cool. So there are a couple of fish in here, very small. Now if you can see them. They're there. Very small. Oh, that's another one. Very small. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> so I wonder if they just get stuck in here or something, or if they actually live in these things. Or they just get washed up on those things and then they're stuck. Until, until they get swooped back into the ocean. Also, I saw some crabs, very fast crabs here. But yeah, let's, uh, let's explore some more. Okay. <laughs> interesting uh, nature around here. Oh, can I get over here? <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. All right. So I guess this was a path once, but not really. Ow. Okay. Okay, so you can go up to the sort of the highest point of these uh, rock formations. So let's try to get there. Ow. Up. Uh. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Alright, let's go this way. Opa! Okay. Yeah. Uh, almost there. A little bit more, I guess. Brave with no shoes, man. Yeah, well, hard is the speed, right? <laughs> All right. Probably have to cut that one out. You know, nudity and everything. Um. Right, what's the right side? I guess this one. Wow! <laughs> That's pretty cool! That's uh, one of the coves around here. One of the many coves. Wow! Well, just gonna enjoy this view for a bit and then uh, continue onwards. So, time to go back to the car. I'm uh, gonna see if I can go to a Luha, uh, which is supposed to be somewhere in a shopping center around here. It's for free, so why not? I must say, for this sort of park, it's, uh, it's very nature rich. You don't only have to stay on the beach, you can actually take these sort of little hikes around the cliffs and stuff like that. You have the lava rocks and all the things and, and you, it, you know, it's very versatile. You don't have to only stay at the beach and that's it. You can do both, 
like like this. Like now, it doesn't even feel like you're at the beach at the moment. Like you're just sort of winding through the trees that are all bent by the wind. And they're sort of laying down almost, some of them. And it's actually already much quieter here. Just a couple of meters inside this sort of forest, forest area. Look at all these trees and stuff, right? All the trees here. And also the, the arid landscape, right, it's super dry here. So there's a little bit of rain. It's definitely very helpful for this environment. It's, uh, well you can see, it's, it's dry as bones around here. So this is definitely something they can use. So let's see what is the way back. Just following some random paths. Oh, a little beanie. Nice looking plants. Do you know exactly what they are? Like it looks like kind of like an aloe vera plant. Just have a quick last look at this massive rock formation. It just looks amazing. Look at how big it is. With those little grottos here and there. <laughs> With that reddish color, right? It's like almost like a Bordeaux kind of color. It's, uh, it's all very brittle. It's like you can definitely see it is, you know, lava that has solidified. Like all these pieces just together. Almost like uh, asphalt, you know, kind of a little bit. Jeepers. Very impressive. And with that we finish our first glimpse of Maui. Let me know what you think about the house sitting travel hack. Do you have any travel hacks that I don't know about? Let me know in the comments.